Hi, I'm Xu Li from Shanghai University. I'm happy to introduce our work, Auto, Adaptive Contrast and Control, based on multi-objective reinforcement learning for the Satellite Ground Integrated Network. The Satellite Ground Integrated Network is highly heterogeneous, where a node can send data to different peers through both satellite networks located at different orbits and the ground networks, including the internet and the cellular networks. To achieve consistent high use experience in all these environments, adaptive contrast control is one of the key technologies. Basically, it has two competing objectives, high throughput and low queuing delay. But how should we set the preference of these two objectives? In other words, how to set the weight of throughput and delay? First of all, the preference should be adaptively adjusted in different network environments, since a fixed preference can only achieve high performance in a specific type of network environment. We use an experiment to illustrate this phenomenon. We have trained two models based on reinforcement learning on the same training environment. The first model put a higher weight on delay, while the latter put a higher weight on throughput. For short buffer time cell network, low delay weight results in high packet loss rate, since the saturated buffer has low penalty on the total reward. In contrast, high delay weight suffers from slow convergence in the long latency satellite networks, since it is too sensitive to delay fluctuations. In this example, the first model converged after 25 seconds, which suffers from extremely low linearization, and the second model converges only after 15 seconds. Meanwhile, the contrast and control for the integrated network serves diversified applications at the same time. Delay sensitive applications, such as online meetings, require higher weight to be put on delay. Super sensitive applications, such as file synchronization, require higher weight to be put on throughput. To cope with all these requirements, the contrast and control should be able to let the application determine the preference at will. Lots of methods have been proposed in recent years, which can be classified into heuristic-based or learning-based methods. Unfortunately, they cannot achieve the consistent high performance in all environments, nor cope with diversified application requirements. On the one hand, heuristic-based methods, hardware actions, with predefined events or signals. For example, loss-based methods such as cubic take a packet loss as a sign of congestion, as it is not suitable for unreliable losses scenarios. Delay-based methods such as COPA don't work well in the short buffer scenarios, for the delay fluctuates in a very small range. On the other hand, existing learning-based methods can only achieve high performance in specific types of network environments. One of the main reasons is that they convert the objectives into a single reward function or utility function by introducing fixed and empirical preferences, which fundamentally limits their adaptiveness to different environments. Based on above analysis, we propose also, like other reinforcement learning based methods, it divides time into consecutive monitoring intervals. At the end of each day interval, it adjusts the sending rates according to a MOL agent and the preference adaptation model. Instead of targeting at finding a single priority optimal result, the MOL agent targets at finding the whole priority optimal frontier so that it can generate optimal policies for all possible preferences. Meanwhile, the preference adaptation model automatically sets a proper preference for each environment by taking a state sequence as the input to recognize the environment. By doing so, auto can cope with different environments and application requirements. In what follows, we introduce the training process in detail. We first formulate the contrast control as an extended version of multi-objective Markov process. To cope with the heterogeneous network environment, we use relative values to capture network states. Moreover, we seek to adjust uh, sending rates proportionally. The end-to-end -end latencies of different flows are also hundreds of times different. A short monitoring interval is not enough for capturing the real transition in long RTD scenarios. While saying the interval too long reduces the real-time responsiveness to network dynamics in short RTD scenarios. Therefore, we adaptively adjust the length of each monitoring interval according to observed RTT. When modeling the network state, the delayed action phenomenon also has to be considered, which means that the state observed in the current interval is influenced by a series of states and actions. To capture these influences, we let each state be a history of network statistics and meanwhile put action in the state. 
Finally, the reward function is defined as a vector of two functions, throughput and negative RTT, which correspond to the two objectives of the control string control. To train the MOL agent efficiently, we adopt an asynchronous advantage actor creating the framework. Multiple agents are trained in parallel, while global parameters are updated periodically. The actor network and the critical network share three neural network layers. Critical network uh, updates the value function parameters, and the actor updates the policy parameters in the direction suggested by the critical network. Unfortunately, the loss function is non-smooth since the optimal frontier contains a large number of discrete solutions. To solve this problem, we adopt a homotopy optimization technology. We first construct a smooth auxiliary loss function. Then the final loss function is shifted from the auxiliary function to the original loss function gradually. Another problem that has to be addressed is the new in the haystack problem, which is described as follows. When the buffer is saturated, the agent can only observe equivalent bad rewards. Therefore, the agent may be trapped in the contrasting states in the exploration stage of training, providing meaningless gradients. To solve this problem, we propose a simple but useful method called the early termination shift. Its basic idea is to decrease the training step length at the beginning of training and increases the training step length linearly with the absolute index. Combining all these components, the whole training process works as follows. We first initialize the replay buffer as an empty set. At the beginning of each episode, the agent synchronizes the network parameters with the global parameters. Next, it interacts with the net environment to collide the trajectory for the replay buffer. Then the stochastic gradients of neural networks are calculated according to sample transitions and the homotopy on the trick. Finally, the global parameters are updated asynchronously. We next introduce the training of the preference adaptation model. In the training stage, since we know the available network bandwidth, we can easily construct the aspect policy, which convert the sending rates to the available bandwidth as soon as possible. We assume the cumulative reward for policy follows the Gaussian distribution. Then, we can use the KL divergence to quantify the similarity of the two policies. Based on similarity model, we can find the most suitable preferences for each training environment and construct a training dataset. Each atom in the dataset is a pair where the key is the state trajectory observed in the environment, and the value is the corresponding preferences. Built upon the dataset, we train the preference adaptation model based on supervised learning. We train our model using the same parameters as Aurora, with the two network emulators for performance evaluation. The first is a PSEAN, which is a community environment evaluation platform supporting point-to-point -point topologies. The second is a Cocoa Beholder, which is an emulator based on PSEAN supporting dumbbell topologies. We compare also with a series of style methods and to TCP contrast and control methods, Cubic and Vegas. We first evaluate the performance in four different and representative environments. As shown in the red lines, by inputting different preferences, Otto achieves a series of higher optimal results. Specifically, with a large throughput weight, Otto achieves a higher throughput but also higher end to end delay. In contrast, with a large delay weight, Otto achieves lower latency and also lower throughput. Therefore, Otto can cope with different application requirements. In contrast, other methods can only achieve a single result in each environment, and they can only cope with a specific type of applications. Meanwhile, they cannot achieve the consistent high performance. For example, PCC suffers from low latency in the satellite and cellular network. FUB suffers from low throughput in the satellite and the hybrid network environment. Meanwhile, Auto achieves a consistent low packet loss rate in all environments. For example, in the satellite network environment, its packet loss rate is about 79% and 86% lower than COPA and PCC, which achieves comparable throughput. With much higher throughput, the packet loss rate of Auto is also lower than FIB, BBR, VBUS, and Aurora. We next show that Auto achieves a high reactiveness and adapts to the rapid network changes by emulating a link with dynamic available bandwidth, which changes every five seconds with a uniform distribution 
ranging from 2 Mbps to 10 Mbps. As shown in figure A, auto achieves the highest average throughput. And as shown in the blue bar, compared to FIB, VIVAS, and BBR, which achieve comparable throughputs, the delay of auto is about 25%, 97%, and 75% shorter. Then we show that auto is resilient to stochastic packet loss, which is a challenge since stochastic packet loss caused by poor link quality could like congestion control mistakenly think that congestion occurred and further decreased the sending rate. To further test the robustness of training models, we let the stochastic packet loss rate of the link ranges from 0 to 80%, which is beyond our training range 0 to 5%, as shown in the red line. Auto achieves high link utilization on the all stochastic cell loss rate. Even when the loss rate is set to 80%, auto achieves about 88% link utilization, which is about 7% 7, 7 higher than the second highest method, FIP. Last, we show that auto is competitive, configurable, and can achieve fairness against different schemes. We first set up two flows on dumbbell topology using CocoB holder with one flow using auto and competing with another flow using other currency control schemes. As shown in the figures, the fairness index first increases with the throughput weight and then decreases. This is because the competitiveness of auto increases along the throughput weight so that the fairness index increases before the auto achieves the same competitiveness as the competing flow and decreases after. Specifically, with a small throughput weight, auto is extremely delay sensitive and tends to decrease the sending rate when the competing flow causes the increase of cubing delay. On the contrary, if higher weight is put on throughput, auto will be more competitive and decrease the sending rate only if the latency ratio is large. Therefore, auto can always find a suitable preference such that the two flows achieve comparable throughputs on the shared link which solves the pain point of the existing offline learning based on currency control methods. In conclusion, when this paper proposes adaptive currency control auto, it doesn't target at finding the optimal result for a single preference, but instead aims for finding the optimal policies for all possible preferences. By doing so, it achieves consistent high performance in different environments, can cope with different application requirements, adapts to rapid network changes, H is silent to stochastic packet loss, and can achieve fairness with different countries and control schemes. That's all. Thanks for listening.